Good day, fellow learners. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check, Madre Ray Gapus. Join you for our discussion for case number 28. And before we begin, let me knock on your kind-hearted spirits to please do join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free and text RN application and review to 100 nurses. And to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. So we'd like to increase the scholarship grants to 300 this year. And to share, please do share this video to at least 10 of your friends and we will pray for your success. Thank you very much for doing so. Now, I'd also like to invite everyone to avail of our promo. Get a free review from us if you process your application for the NCLEX RN with ITAPS GAPUS. It's actually the processing arm. It's called International Test Applications Processing Services of the Ray A. Gapus Review System. Now, we'd also like to make this public advisory, Dr. Ray Gapus, that's me, and the mentors of the Ray A. Gapus Review System are not in any way connected and we're not part of another center named Gapus Review or Gapus Review Academy. So you don't get to see me there, okay? So let's now move on to our next generation NCLEX RN case number 28. And this is about Bunions. Okay. But before we talk about bunions, let me just share with you the good news that the world's, possibly the world's oldest NCLEX are in Pastor at age 66 is proudly mentored by the Ray Agapo system team. So congratulations to Madam Flor Pangilinan and Villarey. She was actually in my class and um, I met her personally in uh, Naga City in Bicol, and then eventually she joined our boot camp in Baguio. So this is her story. Thank you, my God and my Lord, for these blessings. To God be all the glory. I'm deeply grateful to my ever-supportive hubby, Engineer Danilo Villarier, and my family and extended family for consistently praying, serving, loving, and understanding my situation. Your unwavering support carried me through this journey. So let's listen to her success story. Before sharing how I succeeded on my second try at the NCLEX, let me first tell you about my journey. Ready? Maalaala mo kaya by Ms. Charo Santos. I graduated with a degree, BS in Industrial Engineering, in 1981. Right after graduation, I joined the engineering faculty where I taught for 15 years. At the same time, I worked as a financial advisor, insurance agent in a prestigious company, eventually becoming an agency manager. A role I held on until 2019, spending 33 years in sales. Excellent background. In 2003, nursing course for professionals became popular, and I decided to pursue this path, becoming a registered nurse in 2007. I aspired to pass the NCLEX, but when I traveled to LAUSA to take the exam, my tourist visa was canceled. I was so discouraged that I gave up on becoming a nurse. Fast forward to 2022, after 15 years, encouraged me to try again, and I felt excited for the first time in a long while. They referred me to RAGRS, where I started my first comprehensive review in November of 2023, received my authorization to test by December 2023. November 2023 marked my first comprehensive review, and I was overwhelmed. February 2024 brought the face-to-face -face quick fix session, she attended that, where I felt shock by how much there was still to learn. I attended two more online quick fix sessions in March 2024 and in April. I joined the Baguio Bootcamp. I was exhausted and even got sick during the bootcamp. As she says, she's already a wrangler. November, uh, on April 23, 2024, I took my first NCLEX and sadly failed. I knew I wasn't truly really prepared, uh, but I was determined, seriously determined to try again. Walang sukuan. Kaya hindi namin siya sinukuan. We never gave up on her. So from May to November 2024, I attended monthly compre, sit-ins. Thank you to all my incredible mentors. I also attended six quick fix sit-ins online, watching endless replay sessions, walang kamatayan na replay. Mua hugs to Dr. Ray. Thank you, mommy. During this time, I read and reread the two books, NCLEX 311, Old and New Edition, and studied my pharmacology book from, the, from time to time. Finally, all the hard work paid off. I made it. I want to express my gratitude to all my newfound friends. You all inspired me so much. Special thanks to my 
co-boot campers, Ms. Wilney and Mr. Ali, and of course, heartfelt appreciation to all the staff who were always so kind and supportive. My greatest discovery at my age, repetition is the key and praying without ceasing. Wow. And she says, finally, thank you to everyone who supported me throughout this journey. Thank you for the trust, Mommy Floor. And may you find the opportunity you have always been looking for in the world of nursing. Okay, now let's talk about bunions. Now let's begin with a functional concept. What's a bunion? A bunion or bunions are bony bumps that form on the joint at the base of the big toe. In essence, when you get to see a bump like this, the one that we have in the picture, okay, think about a bunion. So bunion risk factors includes genetics. So it could be familial. If your parents have it, chances are you could have it too. And then, of course, foot structure, okay? Um, the type of shoes that you wear, if the shoes are tightly fitting. And of course, if you have arthritis, this is common among females whose age range from 20 to 50. So our code, GAGAFI, okay? GAGAFI. Now, x-rays are used to diagnose and determine the severity of bunions. And it's very important to note that when a patient comes in, and um, they tell you that they have difficulty walking, you might consider first looking at the feet. And then after that, expect that laboratory tests could be done. But if the patient is not complaining about other symptoms that could be indicative of other types of arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis and gouty arthritis, then um, it's very logical to think about the condition as being related to the presence of bunions. Now, an issue that patients are usually um, talking about would be what shoes are best for bunions. Okay, shoes that are best for bunions should be those um, that are accepted by the APMA, meaning the American Podiatric Medical Association. So if the client has a bunion, you have to refer that client to a podiatrist. So a podiatrist is a doctor of podiatry who specializes in um, diseases of the feet as well as they perform surgery or any type of surgery for that matter that involves the feet or the ankles. Now, what are these types of shoes that are best for clients with bunions? Those that with wide toe boxes, and they have an arch support and cushion foot beds. Now, some of the brands that are popular in the market could be good for clients with bunions. So you have Crocs, Brooks, and New Balance. Now, flip-flops or slippers may cause the development of or worsen bunions because it requires the wearer to continuously hold on to the anchor of the flip-flops. And in that sense, it stiffens the uh, area that are involved in wearing the flip-flops. So it's, it's not advisable for the client to wear flip-flops. It could potentially worsen or might even cause the development of bunions. So bunionectomy or metatarsal osteotomy is a surgical intervention for bunions. And this involves cutting the bones and then repositioning the bones with metal screws. This is what you get to see um, on the picture that we have, is, we have here on the screen. So you would see that this is a little invasive and so recovery may take some time. So when a client is discharged after bunionectomy, you have to tell the client that it would take uh, approximately one to six weeks for the initial recovery. And then they can return to the use of running shoes in six to 10 weeks. And finally can engage in running and cycling in three to four months when they have completely healed. However, there is an alternative surgical intervention. It's called the lapiplasty. And this would just involve several smaller scars 
And the good thing about your lipiplasty is that it completely realigns the metatarsal bone as shown here in the picture. So since this is a surgery that involves smaller incisions, so there will be less post-operative pain, there will be minimal scarring, and there will be lower risk for complications. Now, in a nutshell, your treatment for bunions involves, remember the code RIPO, rest, apply ice, and then use pain medications, either non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications or acetaminophen, and of course, your orthotics. We have an example of how orthotics are usually worn in clients with bunions. So this would protect the joint and promotes alignment of the affected area. Now, before we apply what we just learned into a case study and case presentation, let me just share with you a feedback from those who've read my book, NPLEX RN311, the next generation quick fix edition. So I asked them which book helped you the most and the answer, NPLEX 311 po, the best. So halos same na same po siya sa pagkakakonstruct sa mga na-encounter ko po mga standalone questions. Once again, let me repeat that. Halos same na same po siya sa pagkakakonstruct sa mga na-encounter ko po standalone questions. So the um, user of the book simply saying that the way how the questions, sample questions in the book were structured, it's almost the same as that of the standalone questions on the test. Okay, so here we go. Let's apply what we learned in answering case number 28. So we have here a case of a 41-year-old female. Now you get to see the age is from 20 to 50. So that belongs to that age group who are at risk. And you have here a female client who is more at risk for the development of bunions than a male client, comes for consultation due to difficulty walking. On further assessment, the client tells the nurse that she experiences stiffness of the big toe. Now, two things here. If you see stiffness, sometimes you think about rheumatoid arthritis, but usually, even if rheumatoid arthritis is more commonly associated with females, usually affects the joints of the upper extremities that could potentially eventually lead to incapacitation because of ulnar drift and swanic deformity. However, you also get to see that the big toe is affected. And you think about gouty arthritis in which the big toe is also affected. However, what's the difference? Even if redness and soreness are common to both uh, clients with gouty arthritis and in a client with bunion, what makes the difference is found in the next sentence. You have a swollen bulge at the base of the big toe. Okay, so that gives you the idea that potentially this could be bunion. Okay, another way of looking at it is the fact that even if you have stiffness, remember that in rheumatoid arthritis, it just doesn't affect the joints of um, the fingers, it also affects the other body parts. Whereas your bunions are almost exclusively affecting the base of the big toe. So, so the nurse should anticipate which diagnostic test to help confirm the diagnosis of the client. Is it erythrocyte sedimentation rate? ESR is usually used to identify inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, although it's not specific for rheumatoid arthritis, but it could give you an idea that it could potentially be rheumatoid arthritis. Serum uric acid is elevated when your client has gouty arthritis, okay? So, and of course, bone density scan is for clients with osteoporosis in which the client may have loss of bone density. So as we have discussed a while back, the best answer, therefore, is number three, X-ray. Okay. So we'd like to congratulate all our passers, hundreds and thousands of them. Okay. Especially we have here Mr. Joshua Menhildo, the City University of Pasay, who is an 80 fiber. That's a registered trademark of the Regap system. Okay. And of course, our students, Batch 2023 from Pangasinan State University and from the rest of the world. We're now servicing healthcare providers from 36 countries out of, this, of our latest count. And of course, we have, of, 
one of our senior citizens who passed a test at age 60. We have Ms. Jane Geneo Serrano. Okay, and the rest from the different parts of the country and the world. Now, how do you study for the test? You have to learn how to navigate technology because the next generation NCLEX RN test is a technology-aided test. So here at the Regapo system, our learning tools are published by world-renowned publishers. We have our own learning management system that covers all the subjects that you need for the test. And most importantly, we provide you with a conducive environment. We have our own simulation laboratory and of course, limited number of students per class in order to maximize learning through a comfortable environment. So I'd like to invite you to join me in my next generation NCLEX RNCLEX, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN, your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons. Of course, our QBank plus the three books and the NGN strategies and sample questions coming from me. Our fee starts at 3499 Okay. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapus saying, I'll see you in my next video. And for those who are taking the test, good luck and God bless. I know you're going to make it. Just believe that you can. Continue believing that you can and you will. See you.